Alright oh guys, Hatch Crabbit again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. An absolutely rapid fire Friday of Call of Duty action with some results that I was most certainly not expecting. Some big matches tonight for the way things are going to go into Major 1. The big talking point though, Optic Tech says the first two maps they played against Vegas the other day, written off largely as a fluke. Of course, they came back to win the series. Tonight, a very different story up against the Miami Heretics. This Florida curse potentially living on, but Optic certainly did not play well all across the board. Very reminiscent, it must be said, of situations we have seen in the past. Very much into your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Plenty to dive into today. Firstly, wanted to have a look at this because JKL put out what the major one bracket would be if the qualifiers were done. Now, obviously, this is going to change, but it's kind of funny that this would have been the bracket if things were set as of today. Optic would have played Miami round one. We know that generally it's been on LAN at this kind of Florida Mutineers curse. And sure, Miami Heretics is not Florida Mutineers. Different organization, different players, but it's still kind of the same organization in some ways. And it was for formerly the Florida spot and for many years Optic especially on LAN like you know round one games winners round one losers round one would struggle against Florida with Dave Paddy or without Dave Paddy and um, even with Vickle on the team and of course Vickle is still there on Heretics this season so that was one to look for but um, you know this of course is going to change quite significantly but just to show how spicy some of these early round games are still going to be also wanted to mention that on this day 2021 Zuma retired from Call of Duty it's kind of you know sad to see a lot of the things happen around this time right with Scump retiring pretty much this time last year and then Zoom it was three years ago now crazy stuff when he retired before the start of the Cold War season and Hydra came in and of course the rest is history over there but what I've got to dive into though first of all is this Rocker versus Gorilla series this was fascinating to me because understandably lots of optimism lately around this Gorilla team I don't think anyone really expected them to you know be that good I mean let's not forget they were put consistently 12th place in the coaches power rankings but there was some thoughts especially with so many other teams further down not looking so good that Gorilla could be, you know, 5th, 6th, 7th, something like that in terms of power rankings in the league. Now, that was never going to last forever. I, you know, expected that a team that, you know, to be honest, Gorillas have some talent. They don't have as much talent as the other teams. Eventually, that teamwork is only going to get you so far. But usually, that good teamwork gets you a good month, two months, something like that of lead time over the other teams before they catch up and, you know, with maybe superior talent, get the upper hand. But I didn't necessarily expect that to occur so quickly quickly here. Gorillas are an interesting team because I've got to feel bad to Estriel today. He absolutely tried his best to hard carry and Fame is such an interesting player when he's either going off or he's just basically useless. It's actually really strange. Like, Gorillas started this map off very well. They took an early advantage and then Rocker won loads of rotations in a row. It can happen on Invasion. It's also kind of weird, I'm not going to lie, to watch an entirely different game. The game has changed so much in the new patch update that what the pros play is just basically a, con a completely different title. I mean, the maps are different. The rotations are different. It just feels weird to see Palace Hill on Invasion still be a thing. But, you know, those heavy rotations are possible. Vivid, by the way, had a monster series here. Kind of funny, I think, because Vivid has been known as like the eight demon, right? Pred called him it, the eight reaper, whatever it was. Vivid has lost his like five or six last BPL series, and <laughs> what a coincidence, he's now frying in the league. So I think there's a kind of an anti negative correlation when, you know, the more eights you lose, the more you win in the pro league. I don't know, but Vivid had a great series today, and fame definitely not so much. But okay, game one, 250-163, it happens, it's invasion, and um, then we go into a search and destroy where these numbers weren't so pretty for either party here. We know that Awakening Search has been terrible so far, and to be fair, it wasn't Awakening to most of the dirty work. That was vivid. I mean, nice 1v2 here that I thought really set the tone of the Search and Destroy. If he doesn't win this round, probably Gorilla's go on to win it because it does go to around 11, but a big 1v2 there from Vivid. He had 15 kills in the first eight rounds, and um, this I thought was also funny, people were pointing out. I'm pretty sure the Rocker guys are all next to each other, so yeah, they're in some like facility or apartment I guess they play from all the boys are there so you can kind of see on accuracy's cam or on the right hand side there's like a table there but you can see Lindsay is right next to the kitchen counter just thought this was all pretty funny to be honest but um yeah they do end up winning the map vivid though broke the record this season we'd seen four different players all drop 13 kills in a hard point vivid had 15 which sets the record so far which is you know 15 is quite a lot i don't expect that to be the record by the end of the year i think someone's going to get higher than that and to be fair it could have been vivid here because he had 15 and eight rounds and then died every round 
the next three rounds and yet his teammates did come through to get the victory there. So they got up 2-0 and then it was a quick 3-0. I mean, Fame was getting absolutely farmed this final map. It was pretty bad to watch, to be honest. Estriel had this like crazy good three-piece around by the bottom church area that looked like it might be enough to, you know, get some momentum back in Gorilla's favour because we know that they've shown some signs, but this is the problem when a team like Rocker just has a bit more talent, I would say. We know Linz is legit. We know how good Awakening and uh, Vivid can be. And Accuracy, I think, has been reasonably solid at this game with respect to Awakening, right? So like, compared to Awakening, Accuracy has been pretty good, actually. It's just Awakening has been bad. So um, it's tough to read too much into the series. I want to know what you guys think about it because Gorillas have shown to be better than this. I mean, they're sitting two in four. So you look at that, you say, okay, it's not that impressive. And as I say, the coaches almost unanimously had Gorillas like the worst team before the season began and even the worst team like last weekend when they voted again. So um, Rocker have now back-to-back 3 0 two different teams. They're 3 0 Ravens, okay, a team that are expected to be, but now they're 3 0 Gorillas. So that's actually now starting to be a pretty impressive result. I mean, Fame had a 0.67 here. It wasn't particularly pretty and it's not like the ARs of Rocker really came to play. Like, you know, I'm not convinced the Rocker are now good all of a sudden. I just think Vivid had a really good series and Linz is actually like a properly legitimate player so you know they do have some good talent this rocker team and you know going into the season you would have predicted they'd have been better than gorillas but as it stands that was certainly not necessarily the case so that kind of midfield battle is heating up nicely and rocker are now in a pretty good position to make it to the winner's bracket right i mean they've six owed their last kind of matches they've got lots of points on the board so they're looking in a nice position after their terrible start after zero in four now they're six map wins in a row they're looking in a position to potentially secure that winner's bracket spot and gorillas all of a sudden it's a bit of a question mark. They should have capitalized on the opportunities they had earlier in the season when they played better teams and actually probably could have beaten them or at least could have gone closer and won some more maps in those series. So Gorillas still an interesting team. I think a decline from Gorillas was inevitable. Whether it's happened already and whether this is what we're seeing right now or whether, you know, that's potentially still to come or isn't going to happen or whatever, that is a bit of a question. But the first of two massively intriguing series, Optic versus Miami Heretics. We talked about that Florida curse previously, but this to me was an opportunity for Optic to prove that the first two maps against Vegas the other day were just a fluke. Right? They came out against Vegas, they looked bad in those first two maps against Vegas, you know, very uncoordinated, they lost the hard point very emphatically, they lost the search and destroy, then they flipped the switch, Kenny dropped a big map on the high rise control, they came back and won the series. That level of performance doesn't work against a decent team. Miami might even be an excellent team, they might be a very good, great team, whatever you want to say. They're not quite top four, but they're not far away, we've shown that many a time. So Optic come in here, they they go up 90 to 23 and then they get slammed. Like, there's no excuses here that they, or you know, they came out slow or they had bad side skid roll or whatever. They started well and then Miami just won every rotation from then to the end of the game on the invasion hard point. So this was a bit of a shocker, really. Like, both Kenny and Dashi had pretty poor maps here, but look, Miami are a solid team. They came out firing, but this is the concern that you've got to have with Optic. And we've mentioned this previously and I said it the other day. They got complacent against Vegas. Kenny even admitted it, that they went into that series, they messed around with the vetoes, they thought they'd win it regardless. I don't know if they thought the same against Miami here. They probably didn't. You'd think they wouldn't because they know Miami is a very good team as it stands. Great teamwork, of course, as we have discussed. And, you know, if I had to pick between Gorillas and Miami, both teams are good teamwork. But Miami have more individual skill as far as I'm concerned. So they are a more of a threat. And we know right now the league is incredibly top heavy. There are very rarely upsets in the league at the moment. We know the skill gap is significant, at least from a teamwork perspective. So this isn't like, you know, a fluke win or whatever. If you lose a series in a legitimate upset, which this most certainly is, then you played bad. The other team played better. And, um, you know, Optic, of course, will very much realize that. Kenny also said, we mentioned the clip when they'd uh, played Vegas, he said, look, we need to ensure we don't have unproductive days of practice, which kind of implies maybe their practice at that moment, Optic, hasn't been so good. And, well, seems to potentially be translating into this game, right? They go into the search and destroy. And this, again, was, I mean, none of these maps were really that close. Like, to be honest, Optic should have won this map. Like, the way that they played the search was embarrassing, frankly. They had six first bloods to two first bloods for Miami and yet they still lost it like the fact that they lost this map for optic I'm sure that Khan was pulling his hair out here because there were so many rounds they lost in this situation where they had the first blood they didn't capitalize like that's cardinal sin and you also got to say this is a problem that um, thieves had in the last couple of seasons Kenny knows all about this problem because it's all thieves did last year was get first bloods and lose 
person just throw around. So um, maybe that's a Kenny thing, or maybe that's just a problem that he knows how to solve because they kind of figured that out on Thieves eventually. So Vickle ends up getting a ninja defuse here. The bomb goes down. Like there's four alive on Optic and they still get a ninja defuse through. Like, yeah, that should never happen. And there were other rounds as well. Okay, Shotzi had a nice little bit of a jump shot here. And people are going to put the blame on certain players and, you know, which way you want to look at it. But it's not like anyone on Optic has played especially well. I will say Pred today looked rather lost when the going kind of got tough, especially that final control. It was, it was almost like Pred was trying to find kills to help his team, but he was just nowhere near his teammates. And I've seen this with Optic now for so many years in a row, when at some point they just kind of get frantic and they don't trade anything. Like, it was another example here in this final search and destroy rounds when Metals, I mean, Metals, like, you want to give credit to, to Miami today because they played spectacularly. Metals was an absolute monster again. Vickle played really well. He seems to have a pretty good record now against Optic as well. But even this round, 3v2, bomb down. There's no way you should lose it. Metals managed to get the final kill, defuses it with like a second on the clock. And then this control, I mean, the numbers here for Optic weren't good. They, you know, only converted two of their six first bloods, which is certainly not good enough. And then the control, it was kind of fascinating to watch, right? Because the most rookie mistake that you often see from, you know, bad teams or whatever is when things get frantic, they start to stagger, right? They don't play as a team. They go one by one. They don't trade things out. And the best teams in the world obviously have the best talent, but they also have great teamwork, right? They wait for each other. They trade all these type of things. And every year there's one series where Optic play and like the the trades just don't exist like if you watch that final control back especially the last couple of rounds it's just green arrow death and then there's no trade and then like Miami will get the next kill and then someone will fly out and then die and I mean I don't exactly know what shots he is doing here he gets a nice couple of kills he goes to absolutely fly on this final guy which is probably not fully necessary but um you know gets the job done anyway and it looked like they were going to be in a good position here but in the end metals went big and they managed to close out this map Miami so none of these maps were particularly close a Especially these final couple of rounds, like Pred apparently loves this map, right? But he really didn't have a good time. So I don't really want to pick on Pred because it's not like anybody on Optic played, I thought, especially well. Even though Kenny was, you know, doing his best, I think, at times. And Dashi had some decent moments in the final map. But the SMGs weren't really there to play. And yeah, when things got, when the backs were against the wall somewhat, and when Optic maybe felt some pressure, it's all of a sudden started to fall apart again. And we've seen that before. Now, it's only an online league match, and this will be big learnings for Optic. But, and I still think they're a top for team and I think Miami just played incredibly well if this series was run a hundred times I think Optics still win the majority of those series as it presently stands but we know what Vickle was saying to the camera dropping up the hot 3-0 after the series and lots of questions for Optic because sure top four team but I'm um, looking the weakest right now of the top four teams lots of Optic to work on the funny thing is about this of course they play phase on Sunday and quite often when this summer stuff happens they will lose to a team and then they'll of course find some way to beat phase whether that's going to happen this time that of course remains to be seen and even Minnesota Rocco, like, I know the social guy is working for these guys now, and he's obviously not withholding any punches because drops the classic flop to go on the timeline. And have a look at these numbers, right? I mean, going into today, this is not the type of stuff that I was have expected. Pro with a 0.77, Dashi with a 0.9, Shotzi with a 0.93, Kenny with a 0.9, and then especially Metals on the other side just had an absolute monster series. And as I say, none of these maps were really especially close. And I think that's probably the concerning part for Optic Texas. This final series, though, was the one that if I had to predict going in today was most likely to go game five or be very competitive. I would have probably said Subliners versus Toronto Ultra, two top four teams that have been looking very good lately. I think Subliners have arguably been getting better and better every series they've played. Toronto have been excellent most recently, but they did have that big upset against, well, when they lost to Boston, that has kind of raised some doubts on how good this team actually is. But both teams have lots of pieces to be really great rosters and, well, Subliners in their last 17 series have beaten everybody else 13-0 against Toronto, however, 2-2. Two two. Of course, that stretches back to last year as well. Champs final rematch. My thinking going into this series was that Kismet has been okay so far this season. Skies has been excellent. Hydra's been very good. Sib, especially recently, was great. And I thought, okay, Kismet, he's done okay. He's kind of held his own, but he hasn't really had a pop-off series, right? And my theory, we're predicting New York today, which I did in the break of my predictions. My predictions did not go particularly well today, I'm not going to lie, was that um, you know, he would come out and fry, you know, in that kind of Kismet versus Scrappy thing. He was going to, the Bulldog was going to turn up and deliver the goods. But no, it seems like Toronto and Scrappy really came for the vengeance today because they slammed New York 
talking about one. I mean, this is a New York team that was looking incredibly good before. And also, let's not forget, was undefeated in Search and Destroy. Again, this is what Ultra did to Seattle on Karachi Search. They beat them 6-0. I mean, map one, by the way, Sib had nine kills. Map two, he had two kills. So Sib was running at 11 kills through two maps, which was not exactly great. Insight is always unstoppable this map as well, as he has been a lot of the time lately in Search and Destroy. I mean, look at this one versus two. Finds himself in a great spot, gets the one kill, and then just clutches up the 1v1 as well. Makes a great play here to close out the rounds. So, I mean, this is what Ultra do nowadays. And this is a New York team that hadn't lost a search so far this season, right? They were undefeated in that game mode so far. They were seven wins, zero losses. I said earlier today that if Toronto want to beat them, they'll probably have to win a search. They will have to win a search. They did win a search, but um, they might not have even needed to, the way they're playing in this series here, because they close out the search. They go to a Karachi control, and that again was pretty comfortable. Sure, one round, New York subline has dominated. But apart from that, it was all Toronto Ultra. So, you know, FaZe are probably the best team right now. Optic look the weakest of the top four based on the evidence that we have seen today. Toronto, second best. I mean, look, Paddy P, he may sometimes be early, but apparently he's never wrong. And that seems to be coming true again because he's predicted the grand finals of the major FaZe Toronto. He reckons those are the two best teams. And, well, there is certainly evidence to support it right now. I think what impresses me about Toronto is that everyone seems to turn up. Envoy's been playing it much better than he did pre-Christmas. We know what Scrappy's going to do. Insight has been, I would say, the most underrated player in the league right now, quite possibly. He's been incredibly good in like everything that's been played and probably hasn't got quite the gas that he deserves. And then maybe even you put Kleenex in that category as well because they've both been unbelievable. So here's your box score, ladies and gentlemen. And that is a day of Call of Duty that ends in about 30 minutes. I mean, what about that for the day? Especially these series. I did not expect it to go this way. Sib ended up with 31, to be fair. So he dropped 20 in the final control. Still at a point seven. And it's red on one side, it's green on the other side. I mean, yeah, what a team at Toronto are looking like at the moment. And what more to even say, right? Crazy kind of glitch in the matrix today with the results that we've actually seen. And look at this from Turtle. 15 of the 35 matches we have seen this year have been a 3-0 sweep. That is almost half of the games we have seen a 3-0. Like, what is actually going on right now? But hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.